Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about the therapeutic applications of monoclonal antibodies. In general, monoclonal antibody treatments carry fewer side effects than do normal treatments because monoclonal antibodies have a higher degree of specificity and thus off-site therapeutic activities are less likely to occur. If you can recall from the last video on monoclonal antibody production, I said that there were four types of MABs, murine, chimeric, humanized, and fully human, which are basically um, MABs that are derived from human plasma B cells rather than mouse B cells. Remember, murine MABs are derived from mice, Chimeric and humanized are both derived from transgenic mice. Chimeric MABs have murine variable regions and human constant regions, while humanized MABs are mostly human except the complementarity uh, determining regions, or CDR, also known as hypervariable regions. These CDRs are murine derived. Now we have a nomenclature for MAB drugs that will help us differentiate all four types, and here they are. Murine monoclonal antibodies are indicated by the suffix OMAB, and it's important to note that these mouse antibodies are essentially form proteins, uh, which can trigger the formation of anti-mouse human antibodies, which is the main reason behind its low efficacy. Chimeric monoclonal antibodies are indicated by their suffix CMAB, and remember chimeric monoclonal antibodies have murine variable regions with human constant regions. Humanized monoclonal antibodies are indicated by the suffix Zumab, and they are almost entirely of human origin, uh, with the exception of their complementary determining regions, or hypervariable regions. These regions are murine-derived. And lastly, fully human monoclonal antibodies are indicated by the suffix Mumab. And these are a little more difficult to build, but they are entirely of human origin, uh, which includes constant regions, variable regions, and the complementarity determining regions. So they are entirely of human origin. In the first introduction video, we talked about maraminab and how it was used to treat transplant rejection. Although it was the first of its kind, maraminab and other murine-derived monoclonal antibodies had low efficacy since our bodies will tend to create antibodies against these mouse proteins, which resulted in side effects. That's why scientists have shifted their focus on the other three types of monoclonal antibodies, and clinical development of murine drugs decreased drastically until it dropped to virtually zero in 2003. Interestingly, the first fully human monoclonal antibody drug was launched in 2003 as well, and it was called adalimumab, uh, with the trade name Humira. Humira targets the protein tumor necrosis factor, or TNF, which is a cytokine that is secreted mainly by macrophages to induce local inflammation, uh, which causes dilation of blood vessels and facilitates in the recruitment of natural killer cells. This is a good thing when we have an infection, but it can cause some problems if we have too much TNF, um, especially when there's no infection. So overproduction of TNF can lead to autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, which is the inflammation of the joints in the fingers, wrists, feet, and ankles. This may result in excruciating joint deformity, and Humira works by blocking the, or neutralizing the excess of TNF proteins from attaching to healthy cells, thereby reducing the damaging effects of the excess TNF. In 1994, the first chimeric monoclonal antibody drug was approved, and it was called Abcissimab, uh, with the trade name RioPro. RioPro binds to the intact platelet receptors that are involved in platelet aggregation, which prevents coagulation. RioPro is considered a blood thinner that helps prevent thrombosis and myocardial ischemia, which occurs when blood flow is blocked by plaque. An example of a humanized monoclonal antibody is omalizumab, also known as its trade name, Zolaire. And this drug inhibits the binding of IgE to the FC epsilon receptor on the surface of mast cells, basophils, and eosinophils. Zolaire binds to free IgE to interrupt the allergic inflammatory cascade of asthma. Remember that IgE FCE epsilon receptor complex, when bound to an antigen, will activate the degranulation of granulocytes, sites, releasing inflammatory mediators such as histamine. Monoclonal antibodies are also used in cancer treatments. 
They help combat cancerous growth through many functions that include opsonization, initiating apoptosis, blocking growth signals, preventing angiogenesis or development of new blood vessels, and they also deliver radiation to specific locations. Now let's take a look at an example of each of these functions. Number one, monoclonal antibodies that make the cancer cells more visible to the immune system. The drug rituximab, trade name rituxin, is an FDA-approved monoclonal antibody that treats chronic lymphocytic leukemia and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And you can tell it's a chimeric monoclonal antibody by its suffix sivmab. Rituximab works by targeting and binding tightly to a specific protein called CD20, which is found on both normal and malignant B cells. When rituximab attaches to this protein, CD20, on the B cells, it makes the cells more visible to the immune system, which can then attack. This is called antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, or ADCC. The binding of the antibody leads to the classical pathway of complement activation, which recruits complement proteins to punch holes in the cell membrane via membrane attack complex. And this floods the cell and leads to the cell lysis. This is also known as complement-dependent cytotoxicity, or CDC. Binding of this antibody signals the cell to self-destruct, which is also known as apoptosis. The primary function of rituximab is to lower the number of B cells in your system, which includes your own healthy B cells. However, your body will produce new healthy B cells to replace these. So ultimately, the cancerous B cells are less likely to recur. Number two, monoclonal antibodies that block growth signals. The drug cetuximab, trade name Herbitux, is an FDA-approved chimeric monoclonal antibody that treats colon cancer and head and neck cancers. Cetuximab works by inhibiting epidermal growth factor receptors, EGFR, found on cancerous cells. Chemical growth factors would be unable to attach to these receptors, thus the signal to grow is not generated. Cancer cells and some healthy cells rely on this signal to tell them to divide and multiply. By blocking the signal from reaching its target, cetuximab may slow or stop the cancer from growing. Number 3. Monoclonal antibodies that stop new blood vessels from forming. The drug bevacizumab, trade name Avastin, is a humanized monoclonal antibody that is FDA approved to treat brain, colon, kidney, and lung cancers. Tumor cells rely on blood vessels to bring them the oxygen and the nutrients they need to grow and propagate. To attract blood vessels, cancer cells release the protein vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF. Avastin works by binding to the EVGF protein, which blocks the tumor's ability to communicate with nearby blood vessels, thus interfering with the tumor's ability to grow. In the case of a tumor with an already established network of blood vessels, blocking the growth signals could cause the blood vessel to die and the tumor to shrink. Number four monoclonal antibodies that deliver radiation to cancer cells. The drug Ibritumumab, trade name Zevlin, is a mirroring conjugated monoclonal antibody that is FDA approved to treat non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which are cancers of white blood cells in the absence of reed sternberg cells. Ibritumumab is an IgG antibody in conjunction with an isotope, either yttrium-90 or indium-111. This monoclonal antibody works by binding to the CD20 antigen found on malignant B cells, allowing radiation from the attached isotope to kill the B cells. Also, similar to rituximab, which binds to the same CD20 antigen, ibritumumab can trigger cell death via ADCC, antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, or CDC, complement-dependent cytotoxicity, and apoptosis. Researchers believe that this multi-effector mechanism is as effective as the more conventional high-dose external beam radiation. As you can see, monoclonal antibodies can be used in many applications ranging from autoimmune disease therapies to cancer treatments. And unlike most drugs which can have major side effects, monoclonal antibody drugs harnesses the power of our adaptive immune system to treat the disease. And because they are highly specific, MABs have greater therapeutic relevance and less side effects. So I hope you found this video to be useful. For more information on the therapeutic applications of MABs, please visit the websites listed in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.